that's real good. Yeah, I know. And let me tell you why. <laughs> Wait, did you come up with that on your own? Yes. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a lifelong Hallmark movie fan. And I'm Wendy, and this movie got me super pumped for my trip to Paris. Oh, yeah. Today we're discussing A Paris Proposal, the second movie from Hallmark's Love You Airy lineup. If you want to connect with us outside of the podcast, we would love for you to follow us on Instagram. We are at Girls Gone Hallmark and at Megan and Wendy. You can also jump into our Facebook group, Girls Gone Hallmark. I will leave a link in the show notes. Come on over. Quick programming note, there will be no recap for The Way Home tomorrow because there was no new episode of The Way Home due to the Super Bowl. You can catch up on our previous recaps if you haven't listened to those, or you can hop on over to our other podcast, which is Long Story Short with Megan and Wendy. Let's do some Hallmark news and notes. Okay. Speaking of Hallmark original series, we got a premiere date for Hallmark's next original series. They're churning them out. The series is called Ride. It's about a rodeo dynasty family. Well, I remember when this like was announced months ago and I was like, oh, is this going to be like Yellowstone for Hallmark? Uh, mm -hmm. And I had completely forgotten about it. As had I until we got a release date. It's going to come right on the heels of The Way Home. It literally immediately after. The Way Home is actually airing an hour early that night like their season finale yes so okay. march 26th will be the wow. season finale at 8 p.m of the way home and at 9 p.m the new original series ride will air i think that's smart to air them back to back because they've got those way home watchers yeah I, i'm excited are we re reviewing we've not show? made a we've we not made discussed. a commitment how do you feel about that uh, let's ask the listeners how they feel about it do you, do you guys want us to recap ride the way that we recap the way home email us megan and wendy at gmail.com or jump into our dms vote facebook in the group. facebook group yeah per sleepy kitty paw on twitter tamara maori housley is set to start in a new hallmark film called dream moms which is directed by jessica Harmon, who is the director of this movie we're reviewing today Sleepy Kitty Paw also reported the ratings for Curious Caterer Grilling Season, which had 1.183 million viewers. It is the second Hallmark Movies and Mysteries movie for 2023, but if you compare it to viewership from 2022, it would be in third place overall for all of those Hallmark Movies and Mysteries movies. It did have higher viewership than the first Curious yeah. Caterer movie, which is a good sign. Yeah. I mean, people like the franchise or whatever. Yeah. Speaking of viewership, Sweeter Than Chocolate pulled in 2.026 million live viewers and 0 0.19 of the demo, which is big numbers. The it only thing numbers. ahead of it was sports and Fox News. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of sports right now. Basketball, college basketball, all that crap, you know? All these movies on Hallmark Channel hitting over 2 million is big time. Mm-hmm. Big time. That's a wrap on news and notes. Yeah, I did have one small thing, but it's like, I don't even want to waste my breath about it. But Are you talking about Candace Cameron's yeah, podcast in interview? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to waste my breath on it. I'll leave a link to uh, an article we're talking about. Moving on. Please. Let's talk news and notes on a Paris proposal. Can you do a synopsis first? I couldn't remember what came next. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yes. The synopsis. Anna and Sebastian travel to his hometown of Paris to land an ad account of famed Durand Diamonds and end up in a tricky situation when the client mistakes them for a happy couple starring Alexa Penavega and Nicholas Bishop. This was filmed on location in Paris as well as in Bulgaria. They started in Bulgaria, moved to Paris. And as Wendy mentioned, you're headed to Paris. So yeah. is that exciting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It got me excited for it. I'm glad. You know, I don't like to travel. So. I know. But yeah. This I was excited that it was actually shot on location. Well, you know, some of it. Yeah. Like the scenery shots. Of course. Know. Okay. Uh, during November 2022, it was filmed... I also read that Alexa Penavega had to leave her husband and three children behind for 23 days. I 
you don't think that sounds bad. <laughs> this is me coming off of a weekend alone too, guys. I Three weeks is a long time. I... I think there hits a certain point of time. I think it's nice to be able to focus on your work and mm-hmm. to have time to be just about you. But I do think you hit a certain point where you're like, wow, I really miss them. Yeah, but if you were doing like a full-fledged like movie production, you're like gone longer than that, right? Like if you were in a Mission Impossible 24 or whatever. Yeah, I've heard a lot of couples. Who did I just hear talking about this? Uh, Emily Blunt and... Oh, yeah, that guy. John Cr- Krasinski. Krasinski. <laughs> they basically have said like their goal is to only each of them only be working one at a time and then the other can travel with them with their children if they're gone oh. for a long period of time. Oh, is that like on set school then for their children? Well, he was saying they enroll them in school like they were in Australia or New Zealand and they just enroll oh, their really? kids in school there for a few months. Fancy. Right. It's the life of a movie star. Wow. Yeah. Jessica Harmon directed this film. This is her 14th directing credit. Others include Hallmark's Game Set Love and Rip in Time, both from 2022. She also directed the CBS Christmas movie Fit for Christmas last year. Oh. And she was also nominated for Outstanding Directorial Achievement by the Directors Guild of Canada for the Lifetime Drama one I've seen called Girl in the Shed, The Kidnapping of Abby Hernandez. Ah, I've watched it. Well, speaking of time movies, writer Andrea Canning wrote A Paris Proposal, the screenplay, and her previous Hallmark credits include Christmas Bedtime Stories, South Beach Love, and Two for the Win, but also movies like The Perfect Cheerleader and Home Killing Queen, which feels oh, right up your alley. They are. So that's interesting. I wonder if they know each other from like crossover or from those mm. Lifetime movies. Now, South Beach Love, a movie you absolutely hated, if I recall. I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Go back and listen to our yeah, episode. I'll leave a link to it. It's actually <laughs> a very popular episode of this show, and I believe it was a popular movie, but that episode continually gets listens a year plus later. I think it's because it stars a very popular actress, actor. Oh, because he's popular in the like novella. telenovela world. Yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so A Paris Proposal does star Alexa Penavega as Anna. She last starred in Love in the Limelight from 2022 with her husband. We did not watch that movie. Mm -mm. Prior to that, she was in Taking a Shot at Love from 2021. She is best known for her role as Carmen Cortez from the Spy Kids franchise. Yes. And what do we know about Nicholas Bishop? He plays Sebastian in this movie. He has... 20 acting credits and i'm gonna be real honest nothing i've ever heard of you have never heard of industry on hbo no when i was reading his like acting history i hadn't heard of anything else besides the hbo show but he's a full newcomer to hallmark what's your first impression it started out shaky but a paris proposal might be in my top five wow like best ever for me Best ever? Yes, I don't know why. I know, I know. I did a poll on our Instagram and I was kind of shocked at like how lowly rated it was. Okay, let's get into it. My first impression is the tagline for the campaign should have been Duran Diamonds are there for the fairy tale and the happily ever after. That's that's real good. Yeah, I know. And let me tell you why. (laughs) Wait, did you come up with that on your own? Yes, because there's a scene in the movie just after meeting with Durant Diamonds Mm -hmm. and Gabriel, the bad guy was like, we want to focus like outside of the proposal, like you dirty Americans only care about the proposal. And Sebastian and Anna are talking and Anna's like, all anybody ever talks about is the fairy tale. Nobody ever talks about the happily ever after. Like that doesn't always happen Mm -hmm. because she had what she thought was the fairy tale. And I turned to my husband who watched this movie with me and I said, the tagline should be, here for the fairy tale and the happily ever after. It was a total missed opportunity because that's the direction that they went with the campaign. I'm going to need you to make an ad campaign for our Instagram this week. <laughs> this is this new like thing that we've been doing that are like born out of these episodes is really fun to me. Oh, good. I love it. Yes. And that totally plays into like the owner's yes have been together for so long and then ties into the end scene that they now have their own happily ever after yes yes i hear you good job megan thank you megan's available for ad uh (laughs) lines or what are ad campaigns 
You guys, that's amazing. All right. Let's talk about what we liked about this movie. I have a very long list. Oh, I cannot wait. I'll start. Okay. I absolutely loved Alexa Penavega. Oh, me too. And I had read on Reddit yesterday that a lot of people don't like her because she's too bubbly. Now, I haven't seen her in anything other than Taking a Shot at Love, and I love Taking a Shot at Love. We did. So I thought she's... I liked her a lot. And I did not find her too bubbly in this movie. I didn't think so. And I wrote this down. I think she delivers believable lines with ease and likability. Like, she was like someone that was like, okay, I see that you're very, I the book, Mm -hmm, sort of, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, that kind of mm -hmm. character. But you're also very fun. And you have all this little depth, too. Like, you're struggling with this, like, divorce that she had. Mm -hmm. And she's very guarded. And I just really liked her in this character. Well, I thought Anna and Sebastian had great chemistry and the kiss in the dress shop was steamy. Dude, I wrote the same thing. As I was watching this movie, like as he goes, this is costume jewelry. And I was like, that's sweet. And then there was something so sensual about the way that the necklace got pulled out of the box. And she has this very long hair that she like moves and he like slowly drapes it on her and she just whammo kiss. I was like... I watched this movie alone on Saturday night and I was like, that is the sexiest, steamiest scene I've ever seen on a Hallmark movie. A thousand percent agree. So bravo to the director, Jessica yeah. Harmon. Wow. It was and so to these good. actors because they really sold it to me. In okay. That let me tell you, stop you there. Like, I think I might've told you off air. I thought her husband was originally in this movie and I kept going like, wait, is this her husband in real life? Like uh, this to me, they that do would star explain, in a number of movies. Right. Together. They're in a lot of movies together. And that would explain why this kiss seems so steamy because they're an actual couple. But then I realized, oh, no, that's not her husband. No. And I uh, wow. Wow. Yes. And to our comment about Sebastian being new to Hallmark. Uh, that's not his name. <laughs> <laughs> to our comment about Nicholas Bishop being new to Hallmark. More Nicholas Bishop, please. I agree. I thought he was a good actor. Yeah. I would watch him in other movies. For mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. The writing in this movie had some real zinger of lines. Yeah. That had me LOLing. You were great in Legally Blonde. You were great <laughs> in Legally Blonde? When she walked in in that scene, I'm like, oh, she's Elle Woods. And the fact that he did that line a moment later, I loved it. So I didn't even realize, but she, yeah, she was dressed head to toe in like that pink like outfit uh -huh. or whatever. But, and it was such a throw, the way he said it too yes. was such a throwaway. And I died. I thought it was so funny. However, I have some comments in our wished section. Uh -oh. um, some lines about a broomstick. Yeah. And I'm going to talk more about that. Okay. In a, bit, in a bit. Absolutely loved the dress try on scene for the gala. Yeah. And I don't know if you watched it closely. I watched it very closely. First of all, the music was really good in it. Uh -huh. It was like, I don't know, like Paris. Parisian Indian. pop. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And. The scenes were so fun. Like she, Alexa Penavega was like dancing in uh -huh. one scene and drinking champagne. And like, it just seemed very natural. And I wonder if the director would just was like, do have whatever, fun have fun here. And then we'll just splice all this together. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorite kind of scenes in movies. Yeah. I don't, what are they called? Like what a are, montage? A montage scene. Yeah. Like you know, Pretty in Pink when she's like making her dress. Uh. One of my favorite scenes ever. I just... I agree. Okay. It was a fun scene. What else? I wanted to go back to that kiss because we got an email from Facebook group member, group member Mike. Oh, Mike. He had a lot of thoughts about this movie and um, he didn't want to put him in the group because he didn't want to spoil it for anybody. Oh, he nice. He like went really into it. But one of the things he pointed out was after that kiss, he was like, here's my problem with that kiss is... And I guess we could talk about it in The Wish, but we're here. I want to talk about it now. Okay. Uh, he's like, there's no way that one of the following two things doesn't happen. A, they go back to their hotel and that moment continues. Mm -hmm. Or B, they talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because the option was C, she wakes up alone the next morning and there's – we don't have any evidence of anything we're to believe. They just go back to the hotel and that's it. And they never – they're like, we're not going to talk about that super hot moment we just had. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay, fair points. Okay. I can't remember what exactly did happen after that. They get interrupted, and then the next scene is her waking up in the hotel, and she looks over, and he's not on he's the couch. Not there. And then they, she's she sees missing him. She sees him in the hallway. He's got coffee, but there's no indication that they've had any sort of conversation at that point. 
Ugh, do you have just to talk like, about a kiss that you had? Do you, have you ever like had a conversation with a dude after you've kissed them if you're about the kiss? Sleeping in the same hotel room, and this dude is your coworker that you're pretending to be married to. I do think this warrants a conversation. It would be like maybe you should get your own room because I'm afraid of what might happen next. And if we're trying to be like on the up and up because we're coworkers, or is something happening here? Or we're just going to pretend like we I didn't would kiss. never be like, is something happening between us? Do we need to talk about that kiss? Uh, I might say that. Uh, no. No, I wouldn't. I would just be like, more kisses, please. Okay, but that's the point, that they just, not, not, neither of those things happen. Okay. Keep going. All right. Um, I love the maternal figures in this movie. Oh. Uh, Sebastian's mom uh-huh. was quite lovely. His dad was a real jerk. Yep. And the diamond owner lady, I forget her name, Marie... I don't know. She, she's not credited on the IMDb, n- nor is his mother. Oh, really? There's five actors credited on IMDb for this entire movie. Some intern gave And there's a that. huge cast. I just thought they were so loving and caring to Anna. Yes. I just, I, I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Because she didn't Mary, have. Marion. Marion. Okay. So she, Anna didn't have anybody, you know, in these movies. Like there's usually like some, oh. Oh, she did. She had her friend that lived in Paris. So I take that back. Carol. She had a friend who worked for the posh dog, like yeah, social yeah, media yeah. thing. I was a boy. Anyway, I have two more things. Okay. I loved all the music in this movie. Yeah. All of it. I knew it was going to be kind of like Parisian, like this is what you would expect in like a bakery or something. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But there was just, I don't. I don't know. It made me happy. I just loved it so much. Mm. So, so much. And finally, I felt, and maybe this goes back to the kissing scene. I thought the scene or the relationship between Anna and Sebastian happened very naturally. Yes. You know, and they start out, you know, kind of rough, but then like they really leaned on each other. Like she realized like he needed somebody because his dad was such a jerk and mm-hmm. his brother was such a jerk. And then... They leaned on each other for getting the ad campaign. I just thought it was, I was rooting for them. I agree. All right. I only have one thing that I wished for. What? That at the moment where Anna and Sebastian's lie is discovered, that everyone would have just taken a breath. Mm -hmm. Because everyone loses their SHIT in that moment. Seriously. They're, They're at the bottom of the stairs, right? And the diamond lady's like, I'm sorry, we have to fire you. And then the next person was like, you're an imbecile, the dad. Yes. And then their boss was like, you're fired. I was like, just pile it on all these people. Like, really? Like, just take a minute. Take a breath. What what really matters here? Right. I know, but they had to have this, like, villain with Gabriel, right? Yes. Which, to me, was not necessary. I don't, we don't need a villain in every, like, storyline, I think all of those things. I actually really liked Gabriel as the villain. I think he's the classic he villain. Yes, but I think he's the classic villain. I think he plays the villain so well. I hated him a lot. I think he's the perfect villain. I don't think he needed to be in all of these scenes. Like, why is he in these meetings? Right. I yeah. don't. But I think all of those things could have happened. The Durand people could have fired them. His dad could have yelled at them. Their boss could have fired them. I think maybe what we needed was another montage. Like, it didn't all need to happen on the stairs. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Because we did need all of those things to happen to get to the conclusion of them being apart, potentially blaming each other, Mm -hmm. Anna going to Sebastian's family and talking to them. Right. I just didn't... That scene was like, calm down, everybody. Calm down. Well, I hated that Gabriel was like, gets up on the stage and is like, he's going to put them on blast in front of everybody. Like, Who's the villain here? Yeah. Like, he's trying to play them as the bad guys. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I really wanted Marion to be like, actually, you suck and you're fired. Right. But that did not happen. Okay. I asked you if he was French. I did look at the actor who played Gabriel, and he's from Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Um, I also had read on Reddit that a lot of people were like, the French accents in, these movie, in this movie are so bad. And I'm not, like, I don't, I couldn't tell you, like, a good French accent from a bad French accent. So I would love to know if, like, people who actually speak French, like, was it terrible? Mm -hmm. Like, was he speaking bad French? Is 
Nicholas Bishop, like, do we know where he's from? He's from the UK. And then he moved to Australia when he was six months old. So he's He's, not French. Oh. He's not French. So they all have, like, accents. But, well, I'll report back when I come back from France. (laughs) Okay. Another thing I really liked about this movie is that they did speak so much French in it. Yes. And I read with subtitles. And luckily, like, the subtitles... Translated. Translated. So I just loved it. Mm -hmm. I thought it was so good. And finally... Here's my biggest wish for. This started out really shaky for me Mm -hmm. because we have that instant um, conflict between Anna and Sebastian. And he like repeatedly insults her for like not being like this go with the flow creative like he is. Right. You know, like he's very different than her or she's very different from him. Uh And I was like, oh, God, we got one of these movies again where like they're going to hate each other and then they're going to love each other. Right. But he says and one of the early scenes, he's like, you for, you forgot your broomstick. Yeah. or And I was like, I'm so sick of this narrative where, like, someone who's, like, responsible and on time. Is a bitch. Is a bitch. Yeah. Like, it's such an easy, low fruit. Like, yeah. can we stop doing that in these movies? Like, stop making someone who's responsible, who's just a type A compared to, like, a creative type. A bitch. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, <clears throat> It drives me crazy. Yeah, and if we reverse the roles, if she was the one, like, flitting in as the creative, she would be painted as, like, an airhead. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Not, like, cool. So just stop with that narrative. I agree. Let's talk Did You See That? Okay. I have a couple. Okay, me too. What I learned is Alexa Penavega does not speak French, and there is a moment earlier in the movie where Sebastian speaks French to her, and she says, what did you say? And he lies, mm-hmm. and then she like calls him annoying in French, and she, it rolls off her tongue. Like Her accent is, in my untrained ear, uh-huh. impeccable, so she could have fooled me, but she says, nope, we're just lucky that those words worked out. Well... As someone who's been listening and working on Babbel to learn some Have you? Words, yes. It's a hard language. I agree. It's a really the hard accent language. accent is hard. Especially as someone who... What language did you take when you were in high school? Spanish. Yeah, so did I. So, like, I get... I get super tongue-tied with English. I mean, have you listened to the <laughs> podcast? So, imagine me trying to, like, speak in French. Real bad. At one scene, it's breakfast and... She gets a croissant for Sebastian. She's buttering it. This is way past the scene where she calls him out for buttering his, his croissant because, like, why are you? There's so much butter in it. Anyway, she goes to grab it, and the croissant, one croissant was as big as, like, a loaf of bread. <laughs> she grabbed it with one, like, a claw hand. It was huge. I didn't notice. I was like, am I going to eat croissants like that? Because I'm here for it. Yeah. I'm yeah. here for it. Did you catch the straight-up homage to Carrie Bradshaw? Yes, I did. Oh, I loved it. So we'll drop – I have the photo right here in front of me. We'll drop a side-by-side in our show notes. Yes. But Alexa, as Anna, wears a striped flower top with a striped skirt, and it is – straight up dupe as they Uh say of carrie bradshaw in paris when you see them side by side it's really something special i loved that dress it's a great dress i really liked all of alexa's wardrobe in paris me too i thought they leveled up she brought the right clothes to show off in paris yes i absolutely agree now let's talk about the end the very very end when the couple is talking to camera like we've seen in the Wedding Veil movies. Yeah. I know that it was for like an ad. It was like their commercial. But I saw on Reddit, like a lot of people were like, are we doing this now in every movie? Oh. And I'm like, I think the three Wedding Veil movies and this movie were kind of all made at the same time frame. I don't think there was any like, oh, they're doing it in their movie. Yes. So let's do it in ours. Or, I mean, it made sense in this movie because it was an ad for the diamonds. Yes. Right? Yes. To me, it didn't make sense in the other movies. Agree. Okay. Are you ready to rate this? I am. I gave it 3.75 stars. I gave it 4.5. Whoa. Like, when it was over. You were sad? I was smiling. <laughs> I said out loud, I love this movie. Well, what the listeners of this podcast might not know, but you would know if you listen to our other podcast, is that Wendy had the luxury of having a weekend all to herself mm-hmm. this weekend. And I... I thought of you because I watched this Sunday morning. Um, 
But sometimes when I watch these movies, I'm going to be honest, I think I, I just want to watch this so I can watch something I want to watch. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed this. That was not the case. But sitting down, I thought, oh, Wendy has to use part of her alone time to work. But I'm so glad. It was you. a highlight of the weekend for me. And I even DM'd a listener of the show, Michelle. I was like, I loved tonight's movie. Because I don't want to tell you this stuff usually because yeah. like... I I want it to be like an organic situation here when yes. we talk about it. And she's like, oh, I'm getting ready to watch it right now. So and then I felt kind of bad that maybe I spoiled it because I said I loved it so much. But I didn't tell her anything. I didn't tell her anything. And I have to say that I think we're plagued with the terrible promos mm -hmm. for these movies. Mm -hmm. You know, we're mm -hmm. just getting like these like sneak peek scenes where it's just like a full cut scene that because it was. Did you ever see the commercial for this movie? It was like when they were miming. And I was like, that is a movie I do not want to watch. Yeah, question. If the person you're with starts miming, do you just pretend you don't know them and keep walking? I would cringe so hard. I would never in one million years. I am hashtag no fun. Call yeah. me a wet blanket. Uh -huh. I am not miming with you. I am not doing it. Well, do that... not tell me to relax. Do not tell me to chill out. <laughs> do not tell me to just like smile and have... No, no. I'm not miming with you on the street ever. I thought... I'm no fun either, but I also thought like, good for her for just like leaning into the moment with him and yeah, I'm never leaning I in. I liked it. You tell me if you mime on the streets with your husband in Paris. I'm going to look for a mime. Are there mimes that just roaming the street? I really Paris? was like, is this so stereotypical that they're doing yeah. this like fashion campaign with these two mimes in the background? Is that really a thing? Yeah. 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 Because they were, the photographer gets all mad at them for like, yeah using the mime whatever the anyway. mime loved it i love this movie i'm so glad well if you love this podcast we love your five star ratings and reviews thank you to everyone who's taken the time to leave a review and we will be back next week with both a movie review and a the way home recap that's all right bye bye